So today we are going to start this class inshallah and here we are going to study two things Quran and Hadith. In terms of Quran and Hadith what will we study? First we will read Quranic Ayah and Hadith. Then we will make questions from those Quranic Ayahs and Hadith similar to these questions. And all the <clears throat> questions will address your daily life. We will not go in other things like history or other stuff. We will only write those questions which we will believe that are related to your daily life. So the questions will be short and simple inshallah and their answers will also be simple and easy for you inshallah. What do you need to do in this class? You need a notebook for this class because in this class, whenever we will write any question, I will ask you to write the answer. At the end of the class, I will ask the answers from you. And even in the next day, when next time we will meet, I will revise these questions and I will ask you the answers of these questions. Then the next thing that we will do in this class is the task list. We will just read Quran and Hadith. So in Quran and Hadith, there are many tasks given to uh, Muslims which you need to do in your daily life. So whenever we will study anything, we will give you a task that you need to do in your daily life. So, for example, here we have this question number five. What will you do if you face a big problem or an, an allegation? According to the answer of this question, I will we will give you a task. You will write it, write that task here. Similarly, you will, and according to the next question, you will write another task here, and you will continue writing those tasks. Let's the first class. We study around uh, five tasks. Then when you will come in the next class, and let's suppose you have completed three tasks. So you write three here, and you have not completed two tasks. So you write two here. And also whenever you will complete a task, you will remove it from this list. Here you will write only those tasks which are incompleted. So in this way, we will continue the class. So I hope all of you will benefit from this class, inshallah. And we need an active participation in this class. If you are not comfortable in uh, writing questions and answers or doing the task list, then you can benefit from the recording of the class. But if you want to participate in the class, then you need to be an active member of the class. So we have... Uh, Mr. Abdul Hafiz, Assalamu Alaikum. Mr. Abdul Hafiz, can you hear me? Assalamu Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Had you studied Quran and Hadith before this? Yes, I have. Okay, good. Do you have a notebook right now? Yes, I do. Okay, good. So same thing for other students. All of you must keep a notebook with you because we will write some questions and answer. So let's begin our first class. In my previous classes, students have already read Surah Bakra and Surah Imran. So in this class, we are going to start from Surah Nisa, inshallah. So, Mr. Abdul Hafiz, start reading the English only here, from here, start from here. Okay. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Min Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, O oh, ma mankind, be dutiful to your Lord. 
who created you from a single person, Adam. And from him, Adam, he created his wife, Hawa, Eve. And from them both, he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and do not call the relations of the wombs, that is your kinship. Surely Allah is ever an all watcher over you. Okay, so here first uh, we are giving a uh, we are given a command by Allah Almighty that we need to be dutiful to our Lord. The word used here is ittaku, which is usually translated as fear. O oh, people, fear your Lord. But it is also translated as being dutiful to Allah Almighty. Then we are giving, uh, we are given some information that we all are, we all are created from Adam, and from Adam Allah created his wife, and then from both of them, Allah created many men and women. Then here we are given one command that we cannot cut the relationships of the warm warm basically we cannot cut the relationships a relation with our relatives we cannot cut the relations with our relatives so now here we have a question mr abdul hafiz can you hear me yes Okay, so here we are given a command and we cannot cut the relations uh, ship with our relatives. What if they do something bad to us? Still, can you cut the relationship with them or what will you do in that situation? Yeah, yeah. if they do something bad to us, yes. we, we do not cut the relationship because this is a commandment from Allah not to cut relationship no matter what they do to us. What if uh, that is hurting you a lot? If they are hurting me a lot? Yes. Like I, I, causing I, problems to your property, your wealth, your children, your family. Then what will you do in that situation? Um, um, I'm going to pray to Allah, you know, to guide me first and also pray that Allah change them. But no matter what, one should not cut, uh, no matter the situation, one must not cut the, the relation with. Okay, one thing we need to understand here, we cannot cut the relationship with them, but at the same time, it is our right to defend our property and our children if we believe because often we see in the situations in which some relatives cause unnecessary damage to our things they are close to us so they start using our property our car and all the stuff and they cause unnecessary damage to it in that case it is our full right to defend it through whatever way we want. Similarly, if they are causing troubles to our children, our married life, still we have right to defend ourselves. But our we should not cut the permanent relationship with them. Okay. Yeah. So here we will write a question here. Can we permanently cut the relationship with our relatives if they do something terrible to us
So the first answer for this question is no, we cannot permanently cut the relationship with our relatives. The answer that you will write here is no, we cannot permanently cut the relationship with our relatives. But if we see, but if we see they are causing damage to our property or goods or causing trouble to our children or our married life, then we have a right to defend ourselves in an appropriate way. Then we have a right to defend ourselves and our things in an appropriate way. So first student, Mr. Abdul Hafiz, what is the answer for this question? Yeah, the answer is no, we cannot permanently cut the relationship with our relatives. But if we see that they are causing damage to our properties, our lives, or they are causing trouble to our children, then we have the right to defend ourselves in an appropriate way. Correct. Let's see whether we have any task from here or not. So whatever Islam tells us is uh, divided in two categories. Commands of Islam or commands of Allah Almighty are divided into two categories. One is necessary and the other one is optional. For necessary, often people use the word obligatory In Arabic, they sometimes call it fard. They sometimes call it wajib and stuff like this, but we will not go in those details. We don't need those details. So just keep the thing simple here. So what, whatever Allah com uh, commanded us to do is divided into two categories. Necessary and the other one is optional. So here we learned that we cannot permanently uh, break the relationship with our relatives. So this means if anyone has already broken the relationship with uh, his or her relatives, then they need to restart it. So here we will write the question. I will rebuild. I will rebuild or restart the 
relationship with those relatives with whom I had broken the ties in past. So this is the first task we study in this Quranic ayah. What is the task? I will rebuild or restart the relationship with those relatives with whom I had broken the ties in the past. And in the bracket here, you will write it necessary. So this is one of those things, those commands by Allah Almighty, which are necessary for us. We don't have any choice of breaking or to it. What will be the okay, next thing? I will do it at the end. So, who is the next student? Mr. Lukman Zakaria. Can you tell me what is the task given to us in this Quranic ayah? Can you hear me? Yes. Damn, bro. Can you hear me? I think uh, he is not physically, mentally present here. He is somewhere else. Okay, Mr. Mughal, can you hear us? Mr. Mughal. <clears throat> Mr. Abdul Hafiz. So, what is the task given to us in this Quranic ayah by Allah Almighty? The task given to us is to um, rebuild and restart the relationship. Relationship with whom? With those relatives with whom um, we had broken the ties in the past. Correct answer. And it is necessary okay. to do that. Okay. Now read this one. And give un unto orphans their property and do not exchange your bad things for their good ones. And devour not their substance by adding it to your substance. Surely this is a great sin. Okay, so here one does Allah command us. Allah is giving us another command that we do, when, for example, your brother has died and he has small children, then definitely you will take care of his property. So when they will reach the age of poverty, or when they will become, you will see they have grown up, they have become mature, then Allah is commanding you to give them their property. And secondly, sometime when the guardian takes care of the property, especially in the old times when they were cattle and other stuff, they used to exchange the bad or weak animals with the good one. That is also not allowed in Islam. So I don't think we need to write any question here. This is a general command. So we'll continue to the next one. Now read that. And if you say that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry other women of your choice, two or three or four, but if you fear 
that you shall not be able to deal justly with them. Then only one or the slaves that your right hands possess, that is nearer to prevent you from doing injustice. So here, the first thing we are told, if you fear, then you shall not be able to deal just live in the orphan girl, then marry other woman. What is the meaning of this? In At the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was a common thing that a young boy, let's suppose, maybe around 15 years of a 15 year old boy marrying uh, around maybe 35 year or maybe 40 years old lady that was a common thing at that time same thing it was also common that around a 15 year old girl marrying around 35 or 40 years old man it was a normal thing there according to that culture and even Islam allows us to do that if anyone that's a boy who is 15 16 years old he can marry as such lady similarly if a girl is okay marrying an old man she can also do that Islam allowed that so what was happening there that when guardian used to take care of the orphan girl and when the girl used to reach the age of puberty they often used to marry them but what happened some men did not give them the full haq meher so at that time time this command was given that if you can't do justice with them then marry other women of your choice I don't think we need to write any question from this part. So we will proceed to the next one. Two or three or four. So number of wise is told here. Here we will write the question. Although we already know every one of us know this thing, but I think we better write it because it is from the Quran. How many ladies a man can marry? Or we can change this question. Uh, how many ladies a man? can keep as his wives. How many ladies a man can keep as our, his wife? So the answer is four, according to this Quranic ayah. The answer is four. So how will you write this answer? So you will first write four wives. Then in the bracket, you will write uh, Surah Nisa, Ayah 3. Surah Nisa, Ayah 3. So first you write four wives. Then in the bracket, you will write Surah Nisa, Ayah 3. So tell me the answer for this question. Okay. Um, the answer is four wives, four wives uh, in Surah Nisa Ayah 3. Okay. Now we have another thing here. <clears throat> But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one. Or that your right hand possesses. But if you think that you cannot do justice, then you can marry only one lady. 
or you can have a relationship with your uh, slave but that is not possible these days that thing has finished so only this thing left if you cannot do justice then you must marry only one lady you cannot keep more than one lady so what is the meaning of justice here can you tell me yes or no the uh, uh, the question please what is the meaning of this uh, just doing justice with your wives what is the okay. meaning of doing justice with your wives that is you have to be equal with them you have to treat them equally yes for example if you give a house to one wife then you give need to give the same same house or similar house to other wife as well okay, okay. Yeah. if you give a yeah. gift to one wife then you must give a same or similar gift to the other wife as well okay yes so in yes. everything you must do same for all of your wives so here we will write a question what is what is the condition a man needs to fulfill if he wants to have more than one wife? So what is the condition a man needs to fulfill if he wants to have more than one wife? The condition is justice. The man must have ability to do justice. Otherwise, he cannot marry more than one lady. The answer is the man must have ability and courage to do justice with all of them otherwise he cannot marry more than one lady so tell me the answer for this question okay um, the answer is the man must have the ability to do justice with all uh, all the ladies otherwise he cannot marry them all he cannot marry more than one he cannot marry okay he cannot marry more than one. No. More than one. now you will write yeah. another line in the answer justice mean giving same kind of residence or gift or other goods to all wives justice mean giving same kind of residence or gifts or other goods to all his wives. So here I think we better write the separate question for this as well. What is the meaning of justice? Okay. okay, no need to write that extra question. So tell me this sentence again. Justice means giving same kinds of residence or gifts or other goods to all his wives. Okay, good. So I don't think we need any kind of task from this one. Do you have, uh, how many wives do you have? One or more than one? 
I am not married yet, but inshallah, I'll, I'll get married very soon. Just one. Okay, man, inshallah. I'll give you four wives. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, no problem. So, we don't need any task from here. So, do you think you can do justice with more than one ladies? Okay. <laughs> okay, this means you can have more than one wife. You can do justice and okay, good. Carry go on with more than one wife. So, we don't need to write any task yeah. from here. So, tap on it. That means. We don't have any task here today. We studied uh, only one task, and I will write zero here, and I will write zero here. So you will make a similar kind of table in which you will write this task. When you will complete this task, write. You will remove it from here. Okay, just like this, you will remove from here. Here, okay. then you will write here. One, you write one here. But if you are unable to do that, what will you do? You will keep it written here and then you will write one here. Okay? Yes. Now you need to send me the answer of these questions on WhatsApp. Okay. And those students who have missed this class, they will watch the recording. If they appear in the next class, then they must write the answers before coming in that class. I will ask them the answers in the beginning of the class. If anybody has any kind of question, they can ask me now. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Now, as regards... Um marrying more than one wife yes. if if the man marries one wife and is about to marry another wife yes does the man needs to inform the first wife before taking the action yes marriage um there's a this about this that Zina is the summary of that. This is this that Zina is done secretly and halal thing is done openly. So, if you do a secret kind of marriage, that is not a marriage, it is basically a Zina. If you do, you are doing something halal, then you must have courage to do it openly. Otherwise, you won't be able to fulfill the rights of your second wife. Okay. Then okay. second thing, you don't need any kind of permission from the first wife. You just need to tell her that I am going to marry the second lady. If she accepts good, okay. If she done, does not accept, accept, still you can marry more than one lady. Only your duty is to give them same thing, same residence, yeah. same gifts. You are dealing with them it should be same and equal. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So today we have another class which is the Hadith class and that class will start around 3 hours and 20 minutes inshallah. Okay. So see you all in the Hadith class. Ma salama and don't forget to send me the answer of these questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Inshallah. Inshallah.